Hello folks, in this video I wanted to go over how I implemented saving into this game. Naturally, any commercial game out there is going to have some sort of save system where players will progress through the game and it saves their progress as they go through. In the case of my game, I want to keep track of which levels the player has completed, what challenges they've gotten through, and what their best time was for each level. For instance here, I could walk over to this level right here and I can see that the best time was 1.56. Um, which clarifies that I have completed this level, and I also kept track of what their best time was. Another aspect of saving I need to account for is whenever the player saves, I need to keep track of what zone or what area they're in, and what the exact position is that the player's at where they save, so that the next time that they open up the game, they'll be in the exact same spot. Now, the way that I implemented saving revolves very heavily around this data object that I created. You can see that this object has a lot of different properties that are related to the things that we need to save, including the progress, which is just an integer value that's going to increase as the player beats new levels and unlocks different paths. We have a save count, which keeps track of how many times the player has saved. We have the file number, which in my game, I'm going to have a number of set files that you can choose from. So you could have a file one, a file two, and a file three. So this number right here is going to keep track of which file we're currently using. It keeps track of things like the player's position, the player's direction, and which map the player is currently located at. And then most of this object is keeping track of the stats. Now I have this stats table right here, and we're going to have a different stats object for each individual level. So right now I only have four levels. I have 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, two, two, one, and 2-2, two, two. and each of these have their own level object, which we can see are created right down here. Every level is very simple. It just has a best time and a score. Uh, this is going to be updated over time. I'm not exactly sure what data I want to store for each level, but all I need to do is update this function right here to change how that data is formatted. So with all of this data organized into this data object, all that's left to do is to actually write this data into some file, which is what this save game function right here does. You can see that to start, it's going to update the data object properties with like the player's position, it's updating the save count, and we're keeping track of which map is currently loaded. And then from there, it goes on to check which file number we're using. So if we're using file number one, for example, we're going to write a new file. The file is called file1.lua, and we're using this function called table.show to actually store the data object into that file. Now table.show comes from some open source library. I'll include a link to it in the description. So yeah, as you can see, we have three different files that we can choose to write to, file one, file two, and file three. And which one is written to is dependent on which file the player chose to load when they started the game. And speaking of loading, there's one more function down here called load game, which takes in which file number we're wanting to load. And you can see it's going to check if file number is equal to one. Then we're going to get the info from file one.lua and then load that information back into our data object. You will also see that there's an else statement here, and that's where we call this start fresh function. This just means that if there's no data for that file, we're just gonna start the game fresh as if it's a new game. Now to help with testing this, I created this very crude main menu setup where you can choose what file you want to load. This is of course just a placeholder. In the end, we're gonna design a very nice looking main menu that looks good and will actually be presentable in a final game, but what we have here essentially does the job where you just choose some file by pressing one, two, or three. And over here, I have a Windows Explorer window open. It's pointing to the location of where the save files are going to be loaded and saved. Now I should clarify that these files are being stored and saved into some hidden app data roaming folder that players normally wouldn't access. But as you can see, there's currently nothing stored in this folder right now. But if I go back to my game, and let's say I load file one. So since I loaded file one, you'll see that a new file was created. It's very small, but it's called file1.lua. And this file was created new because there wasn't a file1.lua before. It noticed that, and it created a new one. So this file1.lua contains a very bare bones, empty data object. And we can see this. If I go in my game over to, let's say, level one, we'll see that the best time says not completed because it's a fresh game. The player hasn't completed any levels yet. Similarly, if I go back to the main menu and I press two this time, once again, you can see that a new file was created. This one's called file2.lua. And once again, it's just an empty data object with nothing really stored in it and no levels have been completed. Now, just to demonstrate this saving and loading setup, I'm on file two and I'm gonna go over to the mountain area. 
And I'm going to go over here. I'll stand right next to this door right here. And just to test it out, I'm going to trigger the save function. You can see that it says that the game was saved. So now at this point, I'm going to close the game and I'm back at the main menu. So now since I saved file two and I was at the mountain area in a very specific spot, whenever I go to load this file, it reads that data from the file2.lua file and it determines what map we were at and what position the player was at, which from just a second ago, you saw that we were in the mountain area and we saved right next to this door right here. So it remembered that and put us right back where we were. The other thing I can show you is that whenever you have a level that is not completed, I can go ahead and go through this level right now and complete it in order to trigger a best time and we should see that get updated. Okay, it got a little bit buggy at the end, but I did complete the level and the save file got updated with a new best time for that level. So now whenever I go back to this door, it shows a best time of 156. And whenever I go to load this file again, it will always remember that data and every time I go to this 11, it'll show me that best time until it gets updated again. Having a good save system in place is pretty much essential for any good game, so I'm happy to have this foundation in place and it'll make developing the rest of the game a lot easier. And I think that'll wrap up this video for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like the video. That helps me out a lot. I also upload videos very similar to this every single week. So if you enjoyed, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.